Hello, it's Leslie Fightmaster, and welcome to day 13. And today's class is a high intensity interval training class, so uh, otherwise known as HIT, which helps us to get the heart rate going, burn calories, that good stuff. So take your hands together in front of your heart and take a moment here to set an intention for your practice. And remembering all intentions are always welcome. We'll keep our intention in mind during our practice. And start to come into your ujjayi breathing in and out through the nose. It's a little constriction in the back of the throat and try and keep your inhales and your exhales equal in length through your practice. Let's come onto our backs and draw your right knee into your chest and circle your right ankle in one direction and circle it the other way. And now we'll take the right knee over to the left side and take a twist, looking over the right shoulder, as long as that doesn't bother your neck. And back to center and draw the leg up again toward the ceiling. Hold on behind your thigh. Let's give it a little stretch. And then we'll take the left knee in and circle the left ankle in one direction. And reverse it. And then take the left leg over to the right side for a twist, looking over your left shoulder. Let's give the spine a little bit of movement. And then bring the knee back in. And then hug both knees in and lift both legs up. And cradle your head behind, or your, sorry, cradle your head in your hands. And then take your right elbow to the left knee. And then switch left elbow to right knee. Now we're just gonna go back and forth with the legs up high. Or if you want to work a little bit harder, you can extend your legs in front of you so that they're lower. So the lower your legs go, the more intense you'll feel in the abs. So just moving back and forth. Now keep your low belly lifted and be sure that you continue breathing as you move from side to side. So we warm up the abdominal muscles. Always fun. And now extend your left leg up, bring your palms to touch, and then lean over to the left. Just gonna go back and forth to the left, just little pulses. So we'll work on those obliques, the side abs. And the right leg is just extended in front of you. That's little pulses. And then hands again, interlacing the fingers, and left knee to right, or left elbow to right knee, and then back and forth again. So we're going to do another round of these. I think around, I think there might have been around 20 in each round. So again, try and keep the low belly lifted. Now we are on day 13 and I don't know about you guys, but my abs are getting sore. <laughs> so if your abs are getting sore, I just want you to know that you're not alone. Mine are too. Now extend the right leg up, take your palms together and start pulsing to the right side. And again, working those side obliques. I think there's about 10 of these, so maybe about five more. Keep the belly lifted and keep breathing, always important. And both legs up, reach your arms overhead and stretch. And then bend your knees, take the heels about under the knees and lift into bridge pose. And then as you exhale, we'll lower back down. Inhale, bridge, reach your arms up and over with your palms facing each other. And exhale to lower back down. And again, inhale, bridge pose, stretch out the whole front of your body. Exhale and lower back down slowly. And inhale, lifting up bridge pose, spiral your thighs in toward each other. Exhale and lower back down. 
Hug the knees in and roll yourself up to seated. And then we'll make our way right onto the hands and knees. But walk your hands forward of your shoulders about a handprint and then make your way into down dog. And we'll start to just bend one knee in the other in down dog. Stretching out the hamstrings. Reach your heels toward the floor, any amount. And then stretch both legs back, reach both heels toward the floor. Keep your belly pulled in, come to plank, top of a push up. And then exhale, hug your elbows in, lower all the way down to the floor and take your forearms down. Inhale, pull your chest forward and you want your elbows right underneath the shoulders. Try not to let the elbows splay out. Press all of your toes down. Every toenail makes connection onto the mat. That'll help to spin your inner thighs up toward the ceiling. Hands by the rib cage, inhaling into upward dog, or you can stay with low cobra. Then exhale back into down dog. So we're taking it easy a little bit here, warming up, and then look forward and step or hop your feet up. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale to fold. Press down, inhale, rise all the way up and look up. And exhale, hands to heart, samastitihi. And inhale again, sweep the arms up. Exhale, hinge from your hips and fold in. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, and step back to plank. Hug your elbows in, chaturanga, shoulders no lower than elbows. Inhale, press through your hands and feet, up dog or cobra. Back to plank, chaturanga again, and then lift the hips into down dog. Feel free to keep your knees down in your chaturangas. It's always, always okay. Stretch back, look between the knees or the feet with your ears and arms in the same line. And arms shoulders distance apart with feet hips width. Look up. Step or hop your feet up, inhale, lengthen, and then exhale to fold. Press down through the feet and rise up as you inhale, and exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, circle the arms up, and exhale, folding forward. Inhale, halfway up, gazing forward, exhale, stepping back, plank pose, chaturanga, shoulders no lower than elbows, inhale. Press through your hands and feet, upward dog. Exhale, plank, lower chaturanga, press up to plank, and then lift the hips into downward facing dog. So that second chaturanga, if it's a bit much, you can always hold plank or take the knees down as I said before. Spread your fingers nice and wide and press onto the base of the fingers as you lift up through your forearms. Continue to draw your lower belly in and up, especially at the bottom of your exhale. Look up, step or hop your feet as you inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, press down and reach up, look up to lengthen, and exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale again, arms reach, and exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway up. Keep the belly lifted, exhale, plank. Shift forward, chaturanga. Nope, hold plank. Hold plank instead. Now take your feet a little bit wider. Take your right fingertips and just touch your left shoulder with your right hand, but try to keep your torso stable. Then roll to the pinky toe side of the left foot and reach your right arm up for side plank. Stack your hips on top of each other. Now come back to the way you were in your three-legged slash arm plank and then regular plank. And now pick up the right Sorry, pick up the left hand, touch the right shoulder. Your legs are a little wider than hips width. Keep your torso stable here as you hold. And then we'll roll to the left side and reach up through the right arm. I think I said that wrong. Roll to the left side. Roll the right side, I'm sorry. Reach up through the left arm, oh my goodness. And then back to center. Keep that arm lifted just a little bit more. And then set the left foot hand down chaturanga and back up into plank now bring your right knee in towards your chest and then come to plank chaturanga now bring your left knee in towards your chest back to plank chaturanga once again right knee and then chaturanga left knee in chaturanga right knee in chaturanga left knee in chaturanga 
upward facing dog, thank goodness. Exhale, downward facing dog. And inhale to float the right leg back and up. And we get to slow it down a little bit here. And step your right foot forward, spin your back heel flat for warrior two. So we'll catch our breath in warrior two. Make sure your right knee is over your ankle and it points right over your second toe. Now we'll straighten the front leg, bend the back knee and really press weight into your back leg. Then start to shift forward to re-bend the front knee so that you can still continue to get the grounding in the back leg. Now leaning forward, taking your right arm down to either the floor or you can take it to the forearm to thigh and then the left arm is going to sweep around once and then twice and then sweep the left arm around one more time just to work the shoulder and again and once again reaching forward and around and then take that right left hand behind your back oh my goodness my right and left today are not doing very well are they roll your left shoulder back and bring your bottom ribs forward look forward and lower chaturanga inhaling to up dog or cobra and exhaling back into down dog. Left leg floats back and up on the inhale. And exhale, step it through right in between the hands. And we'll come to warrior two on the second side. Reach out through the arms. Knee over ankle, front heel in line with the back arch. But then start to bend your back leg, your right leg. And ground down the weight into that leg. Then slowly begin to bend your left leg again. But keep that weight in the back leg. So it really is grounded down. Especially as you lean forward and take your left hand down to the floor. Or if it doesn't make it, keep it forearm on the left thigh. Reach the right arm up and then forward and then make a big circle. Inhale the arm up, reach it forward and circle around. Inhale up, palm faces down as you circle and then palm to the side as it's up. Swing it around and again, reach forward, around and up and then we'll make our way with the top hand behind your back holding on to your left thigh or you can rest the hand on your low back. That's fine too. But either way, if you're resting on the back or you're holding the thigh, roll the top shoulder open. And look down to the floor, bring your hands down and lower through chaturanga. Inhaling into up dog and exhaling back to downward facing dog. And stretch back. Now, anytime you want to take a break, please push the pause button, take your knees down, take a child's pose and rest. That's always okay. Right leg up on the inhale, exhale, bring your thigh right in toward the belly again, shoulders over wrists, press away from the floor, we're going to heat it up again, keep the belly and the ribs drawn in and up, now take that same knee over to the right tricep, as high up as you can, continue to press away from the floor, draw the belly in, bring it through center and over to the left tricep, again as high up as you can, Continuing to press away from the floor. Now just let it hover right above the floor so your shin's parallel with your mat. Inhale, lift the leg back and up and exhale, set it down. Left side, left leg up, inhale. Exhale, draw your thigh forward. Your knee lifting up, your heel lifting up, shoulders right over the wrists. Press away from the floor. Now swing it right over to your left tricep. See if you can bring it all the way up there, maybe even closer than I've got it. And then back to center and swing it over to the right. And again, as close as you can, the more you hug that leg in, the bigger stretch you'll get. And now we're just going to drop it down and let the shin hover and be parallel with the mat. Inhale, lift the leg up. Exhale, set it down and come to plank. And then down to forearm plank. So forearm plank, make sure your elbows are right under your shoulders and you're pressing onto the palms, especially the thumb and first finger side of your hands. Lift the belly, lift the backs, the knees, make sure your legs are working. Lower down to the mat with your arms by your sides and then inhale, come into Shalabhasana Locust Pose. Peel the chest up, lift the legs, keep spinning the inner thighs up hands next to rib cage long inhale for up dog exhale back to down dog and 
and right leg up inhale exhale step it through and then take your feet to parallel lengthen as you inhale as you exhale come forward crown of the head reaching toward the floor toes will point in a little bit toward each other so now we're going to catch our breath again in prasarita padottanasana a then inhale come halfway up exhale hands to hips and then fold in again reach the crown of the head down try and squeeze your elbows toward each other so your collarbones widen firm your leg muscles squeeze your outer hips inner thighs toward each other like you're holding a giant beach ball now walk your hands to the front step back and move through chaturanga inhale up dog or cobra exhale down dog left leg floats up inhale exhale set it down back foot flat walk your hands to the center of the mat take your feet to parallel and then clasp your hands behind your back and reach the crown of your head toward the mat as your arms move up and over any amount just breathe here take a few long rounds of breath now release your hands down if you can catch your big toes with your first two fingers do that wrap them around if that doesn't work hold on to your legs use a little bit of arm strength to draw your chest down toward your legs reach the crown of the head down and gently breathe in and out through the nose inhale coming up turn to the front of the mat tuck the back toes chaturanga inhaling up dog exhale back to down dog you can always skip the vinyasas too you can go right to down dog and that way you can save a little energy for when we step it up again which i think is coming right up now look to the front of the mat inhale lengthen and exhale to folds press down rise up inhaling lengthen and exhale hands to the heart I was having some problems with my yoga costume. Bend the knees, chair pose reaching up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, step or float back through chaturanga. Inhale, press through your hands and feet. Exhale, downward dog. Right leg floats up, inhale. Exhale, step it through. And then take your left knee and bend it and then straighten it out. So bend the left knee exhale straighten it inhale bend the knee exhale straighten it try to stay low inhale bend the knee exhale straighten it bring the hands down chaturanga and press up knee in chaturanga press up knee in chaturanga upward facing dog and exhale downward facing dog left leg up inhale now bend the back knee try to hover low reach the arms up and exhale straighten the back leg inhale to bend it exhale to straighten inhale bend try to keep your hips low exhale straighten inhale bend the knee exhale straighten and hands down chaturanga push up and then right knee in chaturanga push up left knee in chaturanga inhale upward facing dog exhale downward facing dog plank pose roll to the pinky toe side of the right foot lift your left arm up side plank stack your hips and then perhaps lift your top leg up any amount and then come back to plank and right knee in plank chaturanga and left knee in then roll to the pinky toe side of the left foot and reach up your right arm stack the hips lift your top leg if you can if you can balance just a little more intensity and then take it back plank lower chaturanga oh knee in lower chaturanga left knee in chaturanga up dog or cobra exhale back downward dog now by this time i think i was pretty tired so if you are too again you are not alone if you need a break take it downward dog becomes a resting pose eventually if you work hard enough right leg up inhale exhale step it through so walk your back foot in about half a foot take it flat and then lengthen as you inhale fold over your straight front leg as you exhale so you can keep your hands on the floor if they don't reach you can hold your leg maybe hold your back leg if you're more flexible but pull your right hip back and send your left hip forward and squeeze the inner thighs toward each other
Inhale the head up. Bend the front knee, step your back foot back so you're in a lunge and reach up through your right arm and twist. And then take the right hand behind your back, roll the shoulder open. Just for a moment and then step back, chaturanga, inhaling upward dog. And exhale back to down dog. Left leg up, inhale, and exhale, step it up. Walk your back foot in about half a foot or so. Take that foot flat, but make sure the toes face the front right corner of the mat. Lengthen on the inhale, exhale, fold. So you can hold your leg and you can walk your hands back or just have your hands on either side of the front foot. If you happen to have yoga blocks, you can put your hands on blocks. If you want to reach back and hold your back leg, you can do that too. Lots of choices. Keep weight in the back leg though. Make sure you're grounded down through the back leg and pulling the left hip back. Inhale forward and bend your left knee over your ankle. And keep your right hand down, lift your left arm up and twist. So keep, try and keep the hips level on your twist. So dropping the left hip down, picking the right hip up a little. Left arm behind your back is a variation. Just roll the shoulder back and then look back to the mat. Step back through Chaturanga. Inhaling upward facing dog. Exhaling back to down dog. Right leg up, inhale, exhale, step it through, taking your left knee to the floor for a low lunge. And then bring your hands on the inside of your right foot and come onto your forearms, or you can stay up on the hands. Back leg can be up or down. You can have the knee down or up. But make sure if your right knee is going out to the right that your toes turn in the same direction. So I just want the knees and toes to go the same direction. So then take your back knee down to the floor. And then pick up and twist, picking up through your right arm. And maybe lifting the back leg off the floor so you're on the side of your left foot. It's a little lizard twist. And your front foot can kind of roll out to the side a little too. And back to center and lower chaturanga. Inhaling up dog. Exhaling back into down dog. Left leg forward, bring your hands on the inside of the left foot, on your hands or onto the forearms. Back knee can be up or down depending how you feel. If you have a yoga block, also you can put your forearms on your block. If your left knee is going to the left, make sure your toes turn out a bit. Take the back knee down. And angle your left foot to the left a little bit. Reach the left arm up, right arm is down for the twist. And if you can, roll onto the side of your right leg, lift the leg off the floor through this twist. And make your way back. And chaturanga. Inhaling, upward dog. Exhaling back, downward dog. I think we have one more kind of in more intense sequence before we cool down. So let's take a child's pose. That way we can catch our breath and get ready for it. All right, back into downward facing dog, arms shoulder distance, feet hips width, right leg back and up. Step it forward. Take the feet to parallel, bring hands on hips, come all the way up and then point the toes out and the heels in. And we're gonna drop down into a high squat. Reach your arms up, interlace the fingers, face the palms up. So lower down and then straighten the legs. Lower down, exhale, straighten the legs. Inhale, lower, exhale, come up. Inhale, lower, drop the tailbone, exhale, lift. Inhale, lower, press the knees back, lift up. Lower and lift, lower and lift, just up and down. A couple more rounds. The legs should start to feel it. And now we're gonna hold and take little pulses. So dropping down and down and down. Just keep squeezing the inner thighs as you move up. Just little pulses to really, really wake up those thighs. 
Squeeze your outer hips and inner thighs. Good. Come back to center. Turn the right leg out. Move through a vinyasa. Knee in. Oh, sorry. Chaturanga. Knee in. Chaturanga. Upward dog or cobra. And back to down dog. Left leg up. Inhale. Step it forward. Take your feet to parallel first. Hands on hips. And then point your toes out. Heels in. Interlace the fingers. Reach the palms up. Other pinky in front. So exhale. Bend the knees. Inhale. Straighten. So knees and toes in line. Exhale to straighten, inhale lower, exhale, explode up, inhale lower, exhale, squeeze up, inhale lower, exhale up, lower down and up, lower down and up, lower and lift, lower, lift, lower, keep your belly lifted as well. Now down and pulse, start pulsing here, outer hips, inner thighs, squeezing toward each other for support. And continue to draw in through your low belly here as you stretch up through all four sides of your waist. Left leg out, back to zen. So we're going to go chaturanga, right knee in. Chaturanga, left knee in. Chaturanga, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then looking forward, and we will come through and sit. Lean back, hug the knees in and lean back and hug the knees in. Little core works. So we're going to go back and forth. If this hurts your back, don't lean back. You can just hold on behind your knees and sit up. Lower and lift, lower and lift. Lower, give your knees a hug, stretch out, hug the knees, stretch out, hug the knees. Stretch out, hug the knees, stretch out. Hug it in, keep the belly lifted as you move, keep breathing as you go back and forth and then hold it, boom, down to the floor. I like to call that one sweaty pile asana. <laughs> Make your feet hips width apart and interlace the fingers, lift up into bridge pose. That should feel good on your stomach muscles. Keeping your chin away from your chest. Spiral your thighs in. And then lower back down. Soles of feet together, knees apart, and rest. And then setting up again, hands by your ears, or bridge pose again. If hands are by your ears, make sure to line up wrists and elbows before you press up. Keep the outer edges of your feet parallel. Stretch out the whole front of your body. And lower down, soles of feet together, knees apart. Last one, bridge or urdhva. Your choice. Or if you just want to rest, you can just hug your knees in and rest. Lower down, lift both legs up, and just bring your arms by your sides. So you gotta use a little bit of core work to lift the legs, but this is a nice way to kind of take an inversion without really going all the way upside down. I haven't been doing tons of inversions in this series, only because a lot of places I don't have a wall, and I'd rather show it at the wall because I would rather you guys use the wall than do it without a wall because it's just safer at the wall. But this is a good variation. And then roll yourself up. I'm going to bring the right leg in front, the left leg behind for pigeon, or you can cross your shins and fold forward for a variation. So if, if pigeon hurts your knee, then cross your right shin in front of the left and either sit up or fold forward. Fold into pigeon or you can stay up and just allow yourself to sink in. So this one thing when we work really hard and then when we get into a stretch like this, we can really just let it go. And then coming up, 
I'm going to bring the back leg forward for Janashirsasana. Inhale, lift the arms, turn toward the straight leg, exhale to extend. So the right leg is bent in with the right sole of the foot to the inner left thigh. And it's okay to stay up higher. You don't have to go just so deep. You can just go as deep as you're comfortable with. As long as you feel a stretch, then you know that the pose is great for you. Inhale the head up. Exhale to release. So you're either going to cross your left shin in front and fold forward or stay sitting. Or keep the left shin in front, extend the right leg back for pigeon. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, come forward, or you could stay up. So again, if you have any discomfort, any pain in your knee, then bring your back leg forward again and sit with the shins crossed. That'll be safer for your knees. If that happens to hurt your knee, then you can take another variation of a hip opener that you like. Try and keep your hips nice and level in this. If your left hip is rolled down to the floor, you can prop it up with a pillow. And then we'll swing the back leg around and take Janashirsasana. Inhale, lift up. Exhale and extend forward so you can stay up a little bit higher you can hold your leg if you can reach the foot you'll hold the foot if your belly can rest on your thigh then you can round forward a little bit otherwise it's better to stay up with a nice long spine pull your right toes back to keep your right leg nice and active Inhale that up, and exhale to release. And then lie down on your back, draw your knees into your chest, and cross your right knee over the left and roll off to the left side and look over your right shoulder for a nice twist. So we wind it down. Inhale, center. And then crossing the left knee over the right, twist to the other side. If it feels a little too intense by crossing the, the knees, then you can always take the, the twist with your legs just next to each other instead of crossing. Make it comfortable. And then back to center. Reach your tailbone toward your heels. Extend the legs out. Bring your arms by your sides, your palms up. Oh, this should be a good Shavasana. Let everything relax. Close your eyes and rest. While you're resting a little bit longer, I have another reading from the book called Seven. How many days of the week can be extraordinary? 
Life moves pretty quickly these days. We make time for work and other obligations, and that's important. But we forget sometimes that life is not just an obligation, it's an adventure. Each day of the week comes to us with gifts and possibilities in its hands. But because of our routines, we often don't see them or can't reach out to them. In our rush to make a living, we forget to live. But happiness is in our hands. We can make this a change. Start to reawaken your body, reach out through your fingers, your toes, your hands, your feet, your arms, your legs. Take a nice long stretch and bend your knees, roll off to the right side. And then make your way up to seated. Sitting up tall, bring your hands together in front of your heart. Hands to the forehead to remind us to have clear and loving thoughts. Hands to the heart to remind us to have clear and loving intentions. And hands to the mouth to remind us to have clear and loving communications. Let's send out this wonderful energy we created to all beings everywhere. Namaste. I apologize for the squeaky door. <laughs> Our roommate just had to leave. Thank you so much for joining me today. Tomorrow, we get to have a nice, gentle practice because I know that you've worked hard all week. So look forward to that. And please push the like button. Please share comments. Um, subscribe, please. Tell your friends, please, please, please. If you can donate any amount, there's a link below to make a donation. And really, any amount is helpful. All the donations are just really, really helping us to continue to make these daily videos. We want to do it for the 90 days and maybe even beyond. I don't know. I can't believe I'm even saying it, but I'm enjoying it so much and I love to get your comments and I just, I'm so excited about this whole thing. So thanks. Have a good day.